What is up YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. This video is all about the second half of the Rebel Season 3 trailer that just dropped that everyone's freaking out about. I wanted to give you some of my thoughts about it, tell you what we can expect and why this is so, so, so dope. Okay, so let's get right into it. Now the first thing that I noticed as this trailer opens up is that that message from Obi-Wan, which was actually recorded at the time of Revenge of the Sith, I believe it was something to talk about how there was a trap at the Jedi Temple um, and how, you know, Order 66 was going on and everybody needed to hide and go into hiding and all that. Now what's very interesting is if you look at that shot when Ezra wakes up, that message is actually coming out of the Jedi holocron, which is really interesting. So I think this is just like a force vision or possibly like a lingering effect of when Ezra looked into the two combined holocrons because they got some knowledge there. Remember, he was seeing Maul and stuff like that. Um, he, he somehow tapped into the force in a way that uh, is you know some might consider unnatural right so that is very interesting as well i mean the other thing that just completely stands out is just the amount of action we get to see mon mothma and oh my god i i'm really really hoping that we get to see some more of the people that we saw in rogue one uh, including Admiral Raditz, because Raditz is my absolute homeboy. So if we get to see some of him, that would be absolutely incredible. We, of course, get to see Saw Gerrera. Um, the Rebel cell is cells are starting to come together, have coordinated attacks. This whole thing with Thrawn, I mean, so cool, right? Thrawn is kind of seeing this all be pieced together. It'll be very interesting to see where Thrawn is at in the time of Rogue One. So that's something to look forward to. It's possible that he dies, right? God, that would suck balls. I really hope that they don't do that. I hope that they somehow tie Thrawn to whatever is going on in uh, with Jakku and with the Emperor trying to find out stuff beyond the Outer Rim because Thrawn is, uh, in Legends, he is put in charge of some campaigns that go into the unknown regions of space. So it would be very cool to see him there. Like, hopefully he's not dead. He's just maybe off the board for a different reason. But we do get to see him actually physically training and then firing some blaster bolts. That shit looks dope. Like, let's get Thrawn into the action. That's going to be very, very cool. Of course, a really big focus of the second half of the season is going to be on the Dark Saber, okay? So the Dark Saber, of course, you know, its roots are way, way back in the day. It's a one-of-a-kind lightsaber. They've never found another kyber like this. And it was stolen by the Mandalorians from the Jedi Order a long, long time ago. And it is a symbol of Mandalorian strength. If you have the Dark Saber, the clans of the all of the people on Mandalore, the Man, which is a warrior race, right? If you're not familiar with the Mandalorians, that's where Jango comes from. That's where Boba comes from. Sabine, um, possibly the Knights of Ren. You know what I mean? There's a lot of rumors that Mandalorian uh, lineage is is uh, kind of to do with um with the uh, Knights of Ren and oh my god how dope would it be if Benicio Del Toro pulls out that dark saber in episode 8 I will lose my mind but in either case the big focus is going to be on Sabine going back to Mandalore and now this could be actual Mandalore this planet or it could be the planet that Death Watch is hiding on. Maybe Mandalore has left that planet and kind of is, is being housed here. Now, there is a big thing to do in canon with, of course, when Maul was a ruler of Mandalore. Ahsoka goes there with an army to, like, fight him. Um, and there's a lot of craziness that's it's in the Ahsoka novel about what is happening at that time. I hope that all gets spelled out explicitly in the second half of Rebels. Rebels is, is a great way to kind of bring this uh, even more ancillary stuff into focus so that we can kind of 
have a better grip on what exactly is happening. But in either case, it looks like Sabine is going to be trained by Kanan and hopefully a little bit by Ezra too as far as how to do hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Dark Saber and uh, lightsaber fighting because later on in the trailer it shows her fighting that other Mandalorian with um, Ezra's lightsaber and that guy has the dark saber so maybe they it gets tossed around or maybe he takes it from her in combat and Ezra throws her the sword uh, or the saber rather I don't really know but in either case Mandalore and Sabine big 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 time um, playing a huge role in the second half of the season. Now, of course, there's this big rumor out there that Sabine is the child of Satine and Obi-Wan. Um, and there's been a lot of people on both sides of that, right? I, I saw a really cool video by Urban Acolyte where he kind of tears down that that rumor. But I don't, like, I, you know, I've seen that video and I've got a lot of respect for Prince. And I think that he's a, he's a really critically thinking guy while being very zen at the same time. So kudos uh, to Prince. But, you know, when he says that uh, Dave Filoni, you know, had said that Sabine is 19 and that that you know wouldn't make sense in the timeline like i haven't dug in enough to know irrefutably that he's wrong but like okay so if the story basically if dave filoni says something kind of on a whim that and and the story group the way that the story group has something planned is, is different like the story group wins the story group trumps dave and i love dave filoni you know what i mean don't get me wrong like he's awesome and he's a brilliant storyteller and he's he's doing a really great service to us as fans but the story group is king so i haven't actually tweeted at pablo hidalgo about this maybe i will later today um but I'm just saying that possibility still exists, um, basically that she's a Kenobi. So that could be really cool. Everybody's kind of paying attention for clues as far as you know what's going on with that. But in either case, filling out more of the Mandalorian history, the lore behind that, the Darksaber itself, um, and what this all means, it, it, it is possible that much of Mandalore, what is left of them, maybe even Clan Vizsla or House Wren or whoever, is either subjugated to joining the Empire or becomes a part of the Rebellion. So that is going to be kind of big uh, for things moving forward in canon. So very, very excited to see how that all goes down. Um, but of course, the main event, the thing that has gotten everyone so freaking hyped is the end of that trailer where old man Obi-Wan is confronted by, quite frankly, old man Darth Maul, or Maul at this point. So the speculation is wild, right? This is the rematch of, you know, a lot of people have been asking about this thing, right? Like, first of all, it looks like Kenobi uses his actual two finger out guard, which was said to be a form that he had mastered to a, such a degree that it was literally almost an impenetrable defense there's maul who has such a knowledge of the force at this point i would say his knowledge of the force far far exceeds his knowledge of battle and different things even though he is quite capable as a swordsman as we have seen in rebels and then in before it um the clone wars um but i, I don't know i i mean i here's what i honestly think is going to happen i think that Maul has come there for Luke. He has come there for Luke because he has seen, you know, he, he keeps saying that he's looking for hope, right? Um, the hope that I think he's looking for is Luke Skywalker. But I think just like Ezra, just like the way he views Ezra, he wants to take Luke and share with him all of the knowledge of the Force, right? Dark and light side stuff and even um, Night Sister magic. So there is a scenario here, uh, an Elseworld fan fiction-y type thing, where Maul comes to Tatooine, fucks up Obi-Wan, and then, to, man, I gotta stop swearing. I'm, I'm trying to swear less on the channel because we're gonna start licensing out videos and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll stay real with you. Uh, he, he comes in and um, fucks up Obi-Wan, and then takes young Luke 
and trains him in all aspects of the Force immediately and tells him that his father is friggin' Darth Vader. I mean, whoa, that would be crazy, right? Can you imagine how strong uh, Luke would have been if that would have taken place? And what I also find interesting is essentially, now we don't know a lot about canon Luke right now in the saga film, but think about this. He was able to teach a Padawan how to use Force stasis. I've never seen that shit before. That is nuts. So if he has the ability to pass on that kind of knowledge to a Padawan, imagine how strong Luke is. I guess what I'm saying is Luke might have gotten that knowledge, you know, if he's looking for the first Jedi Temple, you know, if he's kind of in exile, perhaps because of his own strength. Maybe he has all come to get that knowledge that Maul would have given to him as a child anyway. So very, very cool stuff. But here's what I think is going to happen. Maul is going to come back for Luke. Now, he and Obi-Wan will fight. Don't get me wrong. They're going to fight. But I don't think either one of them is going to be defeated in the duel. I mean, we obviously know it's not going to be Obi-Wan. A lot of people think that Maul will be killed because we don't see Maul in um, episodes 4, 5, and 6. But here's the thing. Just like with Thrawn, I think it, A, it would be cool for fans if they're off the board but not dead, and B, I think that's good for Disney because mall toys, you know, mall comics, just mall in general, they have more value if he's alive, if they extend him beyond it. I mean, come on, he survived getting cut in half simply because he's such a dope character that they wanted to bring him back. So, you know, by that logic, I just don't think that it's time for him to end yet. You know, we could start to see a Knights of Ren sort of thing like going on here. What if Kenobi and Maul come to some kind of an agreement? What if they become allies? What if Maul is doing something out there or, you know, you know, does something to become an ally of Obi-Wan with, with the eventual goal of Luke coming to power and bringing balance to the Force. So that is kind of what I think is going to happen. I do not think either one of them are going to be defeated. Um, but I tell you, you know, uh, a lot of people who thought maybe Obi-Wan was just, you know, sitting around in the sand on Tatooine while, you know, Luke was growing up. Um, nah, bro, like officially in canon, he has a confrontation with Maul while watching over young Luke. So, I mean, it's absolutely essential that Kenobi was there uh, to protect him. So, just so, so cool. So, that matchup is is, is all the hype. And uh, so, that's basically it, guys. I wanted to kind of break down my thoughts um, and, and share with you what, what was going to happen moving forward. Please let me know in the comment section, what are you most excited for? Did you see the trailer? Uh, you know, did you, did you pick up on something that perhaps I missed? Uh, please let me know. Let's check that nerd card really, really quickly. And the question is about the Mandalorians. Now, you know of Boba Fett's ship. It was his father's before him. It's an old Mandalorian warship. The question is, what is the actual model of those types of ships? Answer that question in the comment section below. Like the video if you thought it was dope and subscribe to the channel to get more sweet content like this. I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!